Well, how can you tell if the disease is there? Kids talk a lot. We get things wrong sometimes. But we learn really quick. I'm Lizzie. I like to talk. <laughs> I'm Brian Dury. I'm the director of the Cath Lab at Trios Health. Hi. I'm Hi. Lizzie. Nice to meet you. Lizzie, Brian, nice to meet you. Yeah, so this is Cath Lab. Yes, you're, this is a cath lab. We call it a cath lab because we use catheters in the cath lab. Well, why do you use catheters? Well, this is a, a, a room particularly designed with specialized x-ray equipment so we can take x-ray images of your heart arteries, your leg arteries, your neck arteries. I didn't know that you could use x-rays for arteries. Yeah, well, we can use x-rays for arteries um, through a small tube that we put into your body and then we inject contrast dye. And then that contrast dye, when you step on an x-ray pedal, makes your arteries show up black. And that way we can see if you have any uh, disease in your artery, blockage, calcium. Well, how can you tell if the disease is there? We tell if the disease is there because um, the contrast dye, uh, the artery will appear partially blocked or completely blocked. So if we take a picture and put the contrast dye and it doesn't go through, we know that that vessel is is blocked with cholesterol, plaque from genetics, smoking, diet, lifestyle, heredity. A lot of those things contribute to uh, problems with our arteries, diabetes too. Wow. Yeah. So what does this stuff do? Well, this is called a sheath and we put this in your femoral artery in your hip. So wow. it goes about right here. Actually, it's gonna be pointed up, but you, um, the, we would numb up the area here, like a dentist would numb your tooth up before he works on it, so it doesn't really hurt that bad. So we numb it up, we put this access tube in, there's a cool little one-way valve on here, so you don't leak any blood out, and we don't want any air getting into you. So this is gonna be in an artery, and then through that artery, we are going to use wires, catheters, and then eventually balloons and stints if you need them. So this wire then will go through this tube, travel up your aorta, around your aortic arch, and then over the wire we'll put this catheter and, and we will, awesome. We'll get this catheter up here and this is hanging out at the end of your body and then we hook this to the, to the contrast and then we have a special machine. We press a button and it ejects contrast out of here and then it fills those arteries, we take a picture, and all of your arteries will show up um, like black tubes, just like a picture. And then we actually save it like a picture. And then if, if we see an area um, that has a narrowing, we can go in over that same wire with this cool looking balloon. The balloon isn't blown up when we get into your body, so it has to be small. And then we get that right where the blockage is, we use x-ray, to. there's markers on here, and we blow it up and it pushes the plaque out of the way. It makes the, makes the tube bigger. Uh, and we usually do that in preparation for a stint. And then, um, so we do a balloon, that's called balloon angioplasty. So we'll put the balloon in, make room, f blow, up, blow it up, make a bigger tube, and then follow it with a stint. This is a, a stint that's been deployed, so it's fully expanded. These stints come crimped up on top of a balloon so that this would be mounted over this, sucked up there tightly, so we can get it through this, believe it or not, through this very tiny little access tube here. Wow. And then we'd blow it up, poof, and then that artery is, well, then we take another picture, that artery would show up big and fat. How does plaque build up? Well, plaque builds up um, usually over years of um, lifestyle choices, diet, a lot of it's hereditary, there's things that you can change, like you can't change the fact that you're a girl and I'm a boy and that um, your parents, you know, your, your ethnic heritage. So those are scenarios that do play into coronary artery disease. You can't change those. But what you can change is instead of playing video games at night, you go out and walk for 30 minutes or you get some exercise. Those are things that you can change that will help stop um, the, your body from collecting plaque in your arteries. And then smoking is a huge one. And then your diet. If you eat a high fat diet with lots of fried foods, um, you have a tendency to then to that to go into your coronary arteries. 
Can kids ever, ever have this problem? It's pretty rare for kids to have coronary artery disease, but there are kids that do end up coming to the cath lab for congenital abnormalities. So they're born with a hole in their heart or, and they come to the cath lab for different procedures that we don't do here. And we can actually, they can actually close those holes in their heart. It's pretty rare though for kids to um, have some blockages uh, um, that early on at your age. So why are these needed? Th those are a, another procedure that we do here in the cath lab. Um, this is a pacemaker. So um, you're, before cath labs existed, they used to put these in in the operating room. And then when cath labs were developed, they um, switched this procedure to the cath lab. And um, the cardiologist makes a small incision up here in your chest and then gets access to your vein and puts these two little electrodes into your heart that will connect to um, this device. This one's a dual lead, so one in the ventricle and one in the atrium, there's four chambers in your heart. And then he sews it back up and this will make sure that your heart never beats too slow. What, did you, what do you think the difference between a cath lab and a, a cath like person that does like the stuff and puts it in between a heart surgeon? We're partners with the heart surgeons, but we like to never send our patient to a heart surgeon. So this is a technology that came out um, after bypass surgery came out. So you used to come to a cath lab and, and all that was available was the images. So we would take the x-ray images and we'd find the disease and we didn't have these tools to fix it. We would just call up a surgeon, a cardiothoracic surgeon, a heart surgeon, and the patient would go off to the OR and have what's called a bypass. So when these tools came out, we started fixing the patients so they did not have to go in and have the large incision and their chest opened up and five or six days in the hospital and, and three months of recovery time. So that, that's exciting about, about the cath lab too is the recovery time is so quick. But we certainly um, cannot fix everybody. And what the research shows is that when you have diabetes, multi-vessel disease, we, we need to send you to a surgeon. So they, everybody works together as a team uh, and tries to, you know, fix the coronary artery disease. What are three things that you think people need to know most, mostly about cath labs? Well, that's a great question. I think the three things that people should know about the cath lab are, is, is that one, the last 23 years that I've been working as a nurse is that it's, it's a procedure, it's not surgery. Uh, a lot of times people say it's surgery. It's not surgery, there's no, not usually general anesthesia involved, so it's minimally invasive. So I, I, I like people to know that it's, it's a pretty easy procedure to go through. If you can go through a crown in the dentist's office, you can, you can easily go through an angiogram. Two is that technology and procedures are available locally and that they need to uh, ask your doctor about them. Is there, what, for any procedure, what minimally invasive procedure is there locally that, that can help my condition versus uh, a more, uh, a larger surgery? Um, and then three would be that uh, there is exciting technology coming out in the cath lab every day. We didn't even talk about IVISR, uh, which is intravascular ultrasound. Um, and some companies right now are working on a bioabsorbable stent. So this is a piece of metal. In our, in, in your, certainly in your lifetime, oh. you're going to see a bioabsorbable stent. So it's a stent that's going to go, it's going to look, it's going to be a polymer and it will look like that, it will go into your body, and it will be absorbed in the period of 12 months. And then you'll have a healthy vessel left behind. So I'm hoping they have that perfected by the time I need this kind of procedure. Okay. To tag in on that, I would say that really what we should all encourage is that you live a healthy, active lifestyle so you never have to come here. Well, thank you. This has like, been a great thank experience. Thank you. It's great to meet you. Hope I can meet you again sometime. <laughs> okay.